outstanding team effort. I want to thank our coaches for working so hard last week and uh, the, the, taking the next step for our team. We made some improvement. We're not there yet. We got to continue to stay hungry, continue to work on the things that we identify that we have to fix, and we have to stay hungry this week. This is a very challenging opponent in Mississippi State and a hostile crowd starting SEC play. I want to thank our great Tiger fans. That Tiger walk was exceptional. And the energy that you provide to me and to our team, I want to thank you for it. And our student body, the whole game, you guys are outstanding. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. A couple of things that we worked on last week and we did improve, our tempo uh, has gotten better. It's not where it needs to be. We need to continue to improve. Explosive plays, we had 12, which was really good. Uh, we improved in our protection. We only have one sack, but we're still not there yet. We're going to be challenged again this week. I thought Max Johnson played a good game. You saw Deion Smith, uh, Jack Bash, and Corey Conner, the same things we've been seeing in camp. They finally got a chance to do it in Tiger Stadium. I'm, I'm happy for them, and I'm happy for the whole offense. They improved a lot. On defense, we want to start fast. We want to strike blocks. We want to cause turnovers. When we put pressure on the quarterback, we did that. We caused two turnovers, had a touchdown. I thought we played very good in spots. Uh, we still gave up some uh, missed assignments, some deep balls. We're going to have to fix that in a hurry. The things that we're working on this week must improve this week. Continue to improve in tempo. Continue to improve in our run game. I thought Corey Connor made some outstanding runs. Uh, some were open holes, some he did on his own. We have to block better. We have to come up with better schemes. And pass protection needs to continue to improve. We're going to be challenged this week. Uh, Ornette is a very, very good defensive coordinator. On defense, obviously, the crossing routes, the wheel routes, the pick routes, all the things that we saw last year, we've seen them again on film, and uh, they're very good at it. Special teams, punt return. We're losing a lot of hidden yardage. we got to catch all balls. we got to do a better job of catching the football before it hits the ground. We got to do a better job of holding up guys on the line of scrimmage so our punt returner has room to at least get 10 yards. Uh, we're going to work on that hard this year. On Mississippi State, obviously Mike Leach runs the air raid, led by quarterback Will Rogers, two outstanding wide receivers in Jaden Valley and Makai Polk, but they're all over the place. They got athletes all over the place. They know how to throw the football, they know how to dissect defenses, they're very good. On defense, as I said, Zach Ornette, I interviewed him last year. A very talented young coach, runs a 4-2-5, has unusual ways to get to the 3-3 stacks, makes it uh, very challenging in uh, protection. Uh, he has a very good defensive line led by Tyra Sweet and Jaden Crumlin. Mississippi State is going to be a big challenge. Obviously, an SEC team playing in a hostile crowd. Any questions? Ed Wilson, Alexander from The Advocate. You were... I think worried about Andre Anthony after the yeah. game. What's his status now? You know, I just had a conversation with him. And let me say so, this about Andre Anthony. What an outstanding Tiger. What an outstanding leader. Uh, I've coached Andre. Andre has been with me since the beginning here. Uh, we have, I absolutely love him. He has a season in an injury. We just discussed it. But uh, it, it, it's sad news. It really is because he's having a good season. Uh, he's going to be unavailable this season. and uh, But he's going to be with us. Uh, he's going to deal with it, and what the next step is for him, we're going to find out. Hey, Coach Matt Trent, WBRZ, and that I've got two quick ones. That same day, I know Austin Deckless got hurt, but walked off on his own free will. I mean, is he good to go for this week? Yeah, he's going to be good. He, he'll be fine. Okay. I, I, I call him Iron Man. <laughs> he, he, he gets a little injury, and he bounces back about two plays later. You know, Austin played uh, more more snaps than anybody here at LSU. Very tough. Uh, very good Tiger. And, and another one is, I know Max, after the game on Saturday, said that a huge reason for the passing attack being so successful is Kayshawn Booty moving to the slot. Right. I just want to ask what the philosophy leading up to that was, and when you look back at it on yeah. film, how did him in that position make everything? Well, we want to get him the ball quick, and we want to put him on a nickel and uh, see if uh, we can get him the ball up the middle, see if we can get him the ball on the bubble screens, which is the slots closer. It was just different ways to get him the ball in the fly sweep, uh, get him involved early. But you know what? It ended up opening up the outside for us. Uh, I don't think we had planned that, to be honest with you. 
they singled up those guys on the outside, and those guys on the outside had success. Coach, this is uh, Josh Sibley with Louisiana Veteran Football. Uh, I know in the past you've mentioned uh, going with a hot hand. Uh, do you do the past two games for kind of translate to more carries? Say that again now. Um, I know in the past you've mentioned going with a hot hand. Uh, do the past two games for kind of translate to more carries for him? Oh, sure. You know, we want to get those guys. You know, Monty Goodman's going to be healthy. Uh, Ty Davis is still our starter, but you know, we want to get the ball in our best players' hands. And uh, the more snaps they can get, uh, the better off we're going to be. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, obviously, just because of the nature of Mississippi State's offense, you know, they're, they're going to put as many receivers out there as they possibly can. I'm um, just curious as to what the defensive approach might change. Do you the guys envision maybe dropping some more guys back to kind of help with the passing game coverage, or how, how do you kind of envision that going this week? Well, that's something I can't tell you, Glenn. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's something, you know, we have a plan. We've been looking at uh, Mississippi State ever since we couldn't stop them last year. And it was embarrassing. I was embarrassed as a coach, and I take full responsibility. So, yes, we have some plans to do some different things, but uh, obviously I can't tell you. Hey, uh, Sheldon Nichols with The Advocate. Um, with uh, Andre Anthony out, um, do you expect Alligator to be back this week? And yeah. also, uh, B.J. Aguilari. Um He's got more sacks already than he did in 10 games last year. Where has he made the biggest jump, and, and what do you, what's his biggest strength? First of all, i got to uh, give Andre Carter the, the credit. He has come in here as a defensive line coach, brought energy, is coaching those guys. You know, he had 80 and a half sacks. He's teaching them some stuff. He's challenging them every day on the little things, showing them how he did things. He's been a great leader, provides a lot of energy. So Andre has done a good job, a great job, of coaching those guys. You know, BJ's playing more. He's playing the right end. We're playing more of an attacking style defense. We got him wider. Uh, last year, we had him right on the tackle, which is not conducive to making plays in the backfield. We got him two foot outside the tackle and rushing every time. So that's helping. Uh, yes, Ali Gay will be back. And then uh, uh, we moved uh, uh, Mason Smith, moved Mason Smith to defensive end. So you're going to see a three man rotation between Mason, Ali, and B.J. Ogilary. Thank you. Uh, hey, Coach, this is Shay Dixon. Um, one, uh, I'm sorry if I missed this. Do you expect Jay Ward to be back? And two, um, how much of, is this game, or at least do you think is on the mind of the players who played in that game a year ago, specifically on defense? Sure. Uh, a bit of a revenge game for them. Well, you know, I don't know about a revenge game, but they, they, we have our antennas up. We know how good they are. And we know when we got in the game, but we weren't expecting to, to get burnt. We got burnt. I mean, we, we just couldn't cover, and uh, we just didn't have the answers. So hopefully this year we do have the answers. I don't think it was our players' fault at all. They just weren't in good position. They were confused. Uh, hopefully we fix that. And uh, I think Jay Ward's going to play. We'll have to see how the week goes, but we need him. And uh, hopefully hopefully he plays this week. We're going to need him. Hey, Coach Rob, of course, everyone's already asked about the – you know, rebounding from the 2020 loss to Mississippi State. But what have you seen specifically that gives you confidence that this game won't be like last year? Well, you know, we I can't tell you that, that I've seen anything that gives me confidence that it won't be like last year. I'm not going to say that. Uh, my, my antennas are still up. we got a great week of preparation ahead. We have to get better. You know, we still have some misassignments there. We still have some busts. Uh, Cross the routes have given us a problem. Uh, we still have some guys loose in uh, coverage. So those things need to be fixed. They're fixed in a hurry because I know they're going to find it. So uh, do I believe that we're going to play well? Yes. Do I believe that we're going to get better? Yes. But we still have a lot of things to fix. Right. And uh, just a second question. Um, you know, a lot of young guys stepped up, you know, not just Corey Kiner. Yeah. How much do you foresee the, the young receivers, you know, stepping up and taking more snaps and yeah. possibly starting roles going forward? Yeah, we're going to play them. We, we'll play them all. But, you know, we, we have eight, eight, nine receivers that can catch the ball. And, you know, when you go hurry up and you run more snaps, we're going to need all these guys to play. So, you know, it doesn't matter to me who starts. Uh, guys are going to get snaps. Guys are going to play. Hopefully we can spread the ball around and everybody's happy because we do have a lot of receivers that deserve to catch the ball. Hey, Ed, Ed Daniels in New Orleans. A uh, couple of questions, please. Do you think – yeah, I know you had a bust, it looked like, in coverage in the, in the game on Saturday. 
do you think for the most part that you have that fixed? And two, how critical is it in this league to win that first game and get off to a good start? Yeah, it's very critical. And, uh, you know, we, we have no room for error. And I knew that going into the last game, and it's the, it's the same this game. And uh, we're going on the road. We're playing our first SEC game. And uh, do I believe we solved most of those problems? Yes, I do believe we have different answers. We have different defenses. Uh, but you know what? We didn't answer the first challenge. Uh, the first challenge against UCLA, we didn't play very good. And uh, we've, we've gotten a little bit better. But there's a lot of things that we have to f continue to fix, and we are, we are going to be challenged this Saturday. And one of those receivers, obviously, Jack Besh, had a huge game. You, you'll bring him in as a traditional wide receiver, have to shift him to tight end when that position got kind of thin. But yeah. is, almost, is that position almost in what he's doing kind of fit his personality, chipping defensive ends and, yeah. and that kind of thing? Yeah, it does. I think, I think Jake has done a good job of uh, finding out what he can do. You know, Jack was one of these guys, it's like Clyde Edwards Alaire, Justin Jefferson. You know, he was a three star, but we all liked him. And uh, what a great player, man! And he has the heart of a tiger, and he's doing—he's going to do a lot of great things for us. He brings a lot of energy to our team. He's a winner. Hey, coach. Good morning. Um, a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, Mississippi State—it's not the biggest uh, stadium in the league, but it seems like they've done a really good job of concentrating that crowd noise, and yeah. making it a a tough place to play. What kind of challenges does that present for you? Yeah, you know, we're going to play music all week, and. Uh, you know they they play you know they get those speakers really loud there. Their fans are involved. It's gonna be eleven o'clock in the morning. We got to wake our guys up and uh, get going. But uh, yes, it, it does it does provide a challenge. They get those cowbells going. It is one of a lot of stadiums we're gonna play in. It's a it's a game by game process. You're only focused on Mississippi State. But you got that eight p.m. kickoff against Auburn and Tiger Stadium. If you do well, if you come back to that, I mean. Uh, the next two weeks, I mean, how critical could they be to turning this thing the way you want it to go? You know, we take it in one week at a time. You're right. Uh, but, you know, this, we're zero on in on Mississippi State. And more than Mississippi State is about LSU. And continue to fix LSU. There's a sense of urgency to fix us. I know we have good players. I know we have a good staff. We've got to continue to put everything together to be the type of team we want to be. Hey, Coach, um, just, I guess, going back and looking at the film, I mean, you guys, you know, slid Mason over to defensive end um, after Andre uh, injury. I was curious what you guys thought of what, how he looked at that spot and just what about his game makes him so unique to be able to move really all across the defensive line. Yeah, you know, I think Mason has a chance. If, if you look at a prototypical defensive, left defensive end in the NFL, uh, he's a left defensive end. Uh, that, that's where most of the runs go to. And you want a big defensive end to play over a tight end. And he's very athletic to play in space. So I think he has a chance to be a dominant football player there. He shows some things that are very dominant. He's a great inside rusher. He's learning how to play outside. I think he's just scratching the surface. Yeah, and Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag. Uh, what's the next step uh, of improvement uh, in the evolution for Max Johnson as quarterback? You know, I, I do believe uh, – the, uh, the hurry up, uh, getting our guys uh, better acquainted to do hurry up more during the game. Uh, we still not getting lined up like we want. We still had a, uh, a delay of game. Uh, we didn't call we didn't call the play in soon enough. He took too much time in the line of scrimmage. Uh, understanding protections, no one to run the ball. No one to step up in the pocket. And I think the biggest thing is locating his receivers and getting rid of the ball quick. Hey, Ed, this is Michael Cobbler, Channel 2. I had two questions as well. You, know, you talk about the pass rush. How much of that is the secondary doing their part and maybe giving them that extra beat to get yeah. home? It, always, it all works together, no question. And we tell, we tell them, hey, hey, take away the first choice, we got the second. And a lot of times, you know, the quarterback has not had a lot of times to throw because we have tight coverage. I think we have two of the best corners in America. And our, our coverage is improving, but we still have a ways to go. There, there's still some holes in there. There's still some things to fix. On the other side of the ball, you said it last week about trying to find the perfect play versus just yeah. calling a play with it. Um, you know, maybe in the last four years, it seems like 
coordinators and coaches are more willing to, you know, throw that 50-50 ball, maybe put the yeah. ball at risk a little bit. Is that what it takes to succeed in college football and on offense this, this yeah. time of year? Yeah, you got, you got to take the shots. You got to beat your one-on-ones. You got to have players to beat guys on one-on-ones. There was a lot of one-on-one shots, especially on the outside. I thought Max threw some great balls. I thought Dion caught some great balls. Uh, it's just a combination. But if you can do that, if you can beat your one-on-ones, uh, you got a great shot of, of uh, making some explosive plays, which we had 12 of them. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that you've got, obviously, the best two corners in the nation. Did you think Saturday was Derek Stingley's best tackling game? I know he yeah. UCLA, but do you think he really bounced back Saturday? Yeah, you got to give him credit. Look, UCLA, the first the first week he practiced with UCLA, he didn't tackle all camp. So, you know, him him missing a tackle was not his fault. You know, he was put in a position that he, he hadn't done yet. And in order to tackle, you got to tackle. And uh, Corey's been working with him on tackling. He's healthy. He did a tremendous job. Those tackles he made were great, but that's typical of Derek Stingley. That's just a matter of practicing and tackling. Ed, the early returns on this recruiting class look very good. How good do you think it is? You know, I really think it's our best class that we've had here. Uh, you know, from top to bottom, they're great kids, they're great young men, outstanding players, it's very well balanced. Uh, but we're going to see. But the, they, are, they are showing right now it's one of the best classes we've recruited since I've been here. Coach, I heard last week you guys only practiced outside like four or five times yeah. since like the beginning of August. Yeah. Um, how did that factor in? I know you want to get them out there and get them sweating, sweating and get yeah. them in shape. Did that kind of play any factor in leading into the year at all? Yeah. You know, uh, you know obviously, you, know, you think about the 230 games that we've had. Uh, here or in the swamp at Auburn have been very hot. You know, obviously, I've, I've been concerned about that. We have not been challenged yet. We haven't practiced outside like we want to practice. At the time we did practice, it was difficult with our team. So I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. From what I'm hearing, 11 o'clock Saturday morning, I hope it is, and 8 o'clock on Saturday night, so we should be fine. Hey, Coach, sorry if you hadn't answered this during post-game Saturday, but just with the way Deion Smith, you know, emerged, how much did he have to do to earn that, that starting, not starting, but playing role, and, you know, what's his future looking like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to play more and uh, perhaps start. We're going to see how the week goes. And uh, But, listen, we got a lot of guys that deserve to play, deserve to start. I think that's a day-by-day -day process. We do have to get him the ball more. We're not going to stop giving him the football, and he does does deserve to play more. Hey, Coach, I'm kind of curious. You mentioned you're going to be playing music all week to get ready for Mississippi State. What What's on the playlist for this week? Yeah, you know, all those songs they play, uh, and, uh, all that stuff they play. We have cowbells, and nobody's going to have cowbells, but we're going to have it on the uh, – Doug does a great job. Uh, our film guy, he backs up his little – Little, uh, little court with big uh, speakers on it, plays it right behind the quarterback. It's kind of fun. Our guys enjoy it. Coach Chester Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. The warm-ups this weekend, did you feel a different energy, a different vibe from your team? Yeah, I did. Thank you for noticing that. I did. I really did. I felt it Friday night in the meeting. We had uh, we had some good meetings on Friday night. I thought our coaches did a good job of getting our guys fired up. They understood that it was time for us to play LSU football, for us to play our identity. Uh, we challenged all of us. We challenged ourselves to be at our very best. And this game was about LSU. It wasn't about Central Michigan. And our guys went out and performed at a high level, uh, but a, lot, a lot higher than they did the last two weeks. But we still have a lot of room to go. But there was a different energy in our football team. Coach, uh, Steve Moulton with WZZN. I appreciate the time here today. Uh, so last year, uh, the air raid, uh, in, I'm trying to remember your exact wording, of just not as prepared as you wanted to be. So tell me about preparing for the air raid since then and, of course, uh, yeah. getting up for game week. Coach. Yeah, well, you know, these route concepts that uh, Mississippi State's going to give us, we've been practicing for a while. Uh, we have game plan Mississippi State in the summer. We looked at them. Now we look at them again. Uh, we have adjusted cer certain things uh, for Mississippi State, and uh, we got to see if it works. It's going to be challenged. It's not going to be perfect, 
but there's no way that we can have the missed assignments that we had last year be successful. Coach, uh, listening to you talk, it sounds like you're getting to that good spot where you have too many players that can make plays yeah. and, and just don't. Yeah. That's, a good, <laughs> that's a good problem. And, and you know what? We're going to need yeah. them all. You know, as the season goes by, we're going to need them all. And, you know, and listen, uh, I, I was at the University of Southern California where Reggie Bush and Matt Lennon and Lindell White was in the backfield, and everybody was happy. So we we got to keep everybody happy. Everybody's going to get the ball, and it's about a team. It's not about any individual. That's why we say it's one team, one heartbeat, and everybody going. Is that a deal where the competition then really takes the team to the next level because now, now they want it? That's what we want. And you come to LSU, the biggest competition you should have is on that practice field. And you see it. And uh, guys, the younger guys, we expect them to play. We tell them, the older guys understand that. We expect you to play. We expect you to compete. And a lot of them are doing it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.